Eric Dolphy is at once one of the most diverse, innovative, and influential jazz men of all time, as well as one of the most misunderstood and neglected. In this video, I hope to bridge the gap between curiosity and true appreciation of Dolphy's music. My affinity for Dolphy is obvious. I have him hanging on a poster right behind me. But for many, Dolphy's music can be elusive. Yeah, he looks cool. Yeah, his records look cool. Yeah, we know that we're supposed to appreciate his place in jazz history. But for many people, truly appreciating his music can be extremely challenging. Is there a way to decode the music of Eric Dolphy to make him more accessible to more people? Well, that is the goal of this video. Alright, here it is, one of the most iconic albums in jazz history, Out to Lunch, Dolphy's one and only Blue Note release. This one was recorded in February of 1964 and unfortunately released two months after Dolphy's untimely death. It's, it's wild and sad to think that Dolphy didn't live long enough to see this masterpiece uh, released upon the jazz masses. An album that really changed the course of jazz for all time and really demonstrated Dolphy's full development as a genius. These are all Dolphy compositions and Dolphy declared of this album that everyone is a leader on this session. And what an ensemble of leaders we have here. Just check out that lineup. Dolphy is back with the quintet. Freddie Hubbard is back on trumpet. The equally brilliant Bobby Hutcherson is on vibes here. Richard Davis is on bass. Tony Williams is on drums. And Dolphy pulls out all the stops by performing on alto, bass clarinet, and flute. Dolphy was excited to be working with Hutcherson again, saying, Bobby's vibes have a freer, more open sound than a piano. Pianos seem to control you. Bobby's vibes seem to open you up. Hutcherson's contributions to jazz are right up there with Dolphy's in my opinion. And it's not only a massive treat that we get to hear them playing together on this album, but Hutcherson's performance is an inevitability to Out to Lunch. Without Bobby Hutcherson, there is no Out to Lunch. From the very first second of this album, you know you're going to hear something special. All right, Out to Lunch begins with a tune called Hat and Beard, which is a nod to Thelonious Monk. Dolphy is on bass clarinet here, and from Hutcherson's vibes to Hubbard's trumpet to Davis's bass and Tony Williams' drums, each instrument is a vibrant part of the composition. Each piece of this ensemble is performed meticulously, and you can point to any part in this, any instrument in this track, and it will sound innovative and fresh and necessary, inevitable. It has to be there. Track two is called Something Sweet, Something Tender, and it's the second and last time that we will hear Dolphy on bass clarinet on this album. This is a slow track that, again, you might hear in one of those old jazz soundtracks from the 1950s. And it feels in a way sorta of like a Charles Mingus composition. And the, and the real stars here are, I mean, it sounds almost blasphemous to call out any individual artist on this album as a star because it's just, it's every, every note on this album is in, inevitable. It, it has to be there and it's perfect. But on this track, it's the bass clarinet and vibraphone interplay that just creates an atmosphere that is out of this world. That's another thing about Dolphy's playing that doesn't get talked about enough, especially on this album, which is just the acoustic ambience that these musicians managed to create. Hutcherson's playing is almost like a lullaby, and eventually we wake up 
just in time for track three. Gazelloni, is that what we got here? G A Z G A Z Z E L L O N I. Gazelloni. Your guess is as good as mine. This is the one song that features Dolphy on flute. Once again, every musician is in top form here. Each of them sort of in their own way molding this composition like clay. Dolphy's playing feels very improvisational here, experimenting and having fun with phrasing. And then Freddie Hubbard comes to play. And by the way, this album contains some of my favorite playing by Freddie Hubbard. He completely buys into the playground that Dolphy has created as a platform for and unleashed these musicians in. And there is some spectacular playing by Bobby Hutcherson here. And the bass harmonics created by Richard Davis, again, are just otherworldly. Tony Williams is absolutely amazing as well. In a long article on Eric Dolphy's career, Jack Cook defines the basic elements of Eric Dolphy's style as fragmentation, decoration, and a very direct emotionalism. Elaborating on this statement, he makes the point that the random selection of phrases, the use of fragmented melody, and what is often a shifting emotional foundation. And while I hang with Cook's direct emotionalism descriptor, the careful listener will object to the use of the term random, or another implication by Cook that Dolphy's solos are not logical. And it's, it's these kinds of interpretations of Dolphy's music that undermines the music of Eric Dolphy and perpetuates the misunderstanding and intentions of his actual playing. In a statement made in 1960 about his conceptions, Dolphy said, I think of my playing as tonal. I play notes that would not ordinarily be said to be in a given key, but I hear them as proper. I don't think I leave the changes as the expression goes. Every note I play has some reference to the chords of the piece. And there it is directly from the horse's mouth. Okay, next up is the 12 minute long Out to Lunch. And I don't even know what to compare this tune to. Dolphy is on alto now and he spins some of his best saxophone playing on this tune. Hutcherson just kind of complements the space within this track with a note here, a note there, just kind of emphasizing the harmonies, but very sparsely. Each of the individual artists are sort of in their own world, but it, it also feels like they have this telepathic connection that continues to, I don't even know if keep them grounded is the right word, it, but it's literally as if five of the greatest musicians to ever walk the earth lock themselves up in a studio and just start doing what they do best, having fun exploring and just seeing what happens. The final track is called Straight Up and Down, and it's another experimental track with some odd time signatures. And this is the kind of thing that Frank Zappa would do later in the decade. In fact, I'm very much reminded of Zappa on this tune, who, who must have been a fan of Dolphy's music, even titling one of his tracks, the Eric Dolphy Memorial Barbecue. Dolphy's alto is almost begging for mercy here, while Tony Williams' drums seem to antagonize him. And this is another playful song, like a sonic interpretation of a theatrical dance improvisation. And maybe I'm just getting those visuals because I'm connecting it to Zappa somehow, but Hubbard and Hutcherson engage in a sort of improvisational dance of their own. And whatever is going on and however you interpret this song, the results are spectacular. This album ends far too soon and we are left wishing there was a sequel and instead we're left to just kind of flip the record again and start all over this album truly just brings me so much joy it for me it's literally like christmas or a first kiss or the best pizza you've ever had in your life what an accomplishment. The best statement you can make about this is just to listen to it, love it, shed a tear if you need to, 
flip it over again and listen to it again. It is, it, it is a masterpiece. Dolphy's music embodies a shifting emotional foundation, a distinctive trait evident in numerous recorded instances, contributing significantly to the overall impressiveness of his work. What might initially seem random and fragmented reveals itself to be as logical and coherent as his phrasing. The delivery of rich content and complex expression is marked by an enthusiasm and passion that are nearly overwhelming, often emanating from his remarkable ease in navigating the most intricate technical passages. On those infrequent moments when he doesn't quite hit an astronomically high note or unintentionally stumbles, it is the imperfections that remind us that Dolphy is after all human. And therein lies the beauty of Eric Dolphy, the musician, and Eric Dolphy, the person. Elvin Jones once said of him, Eric Dolphy was very conscientious and almost meticulous. He was just brimming over with ideas all the time. In fact, that was probably his biggest problem. He just had too much to say, and this occasionally would get in the way of his saying it. Maybe, but give me authenticity, enthusiasm, and passion over perfection any day of the week. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. I can't tell you how much it means to me. And hit that notification bell so that you don't miss future installments of this series. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next time. And for yourself, I think you'll, you'll like to be in a group where, where you are as, as free as possible. Yes, I, I would like to for a while. For a while. I Listen, the thing is, I enjoy playing all kind of ways. Mm -hmm. And I feel that um, you have a great chance of expressing yourself mm -hmm. and broadening mm -hmm. by playing many, I feel. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't have to be right, what I'm saying, but I feel in broadening, you know. You know, the more musicians you play with, there's certain things that help you, I feel, that uh, just develop, you know. And, That's beautiful. Uh, and, it feels like that. Yeah, yeah, because music, regardless of what it is, what label we put on it, is basically music. And basically it's creative, mm -hmm. you know, because when you think about it, when you hear music, after it's over, after it's over, it's gone in the air. You can never capture it again. So it's pure creation. Yeah. Whether you look, listen to a Beethoven or a Brahms symphony, or if you listen to Mingus or Coltrane or Stravinsky or Ravel yeah, 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 or Duke Ellington yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or Sonny Rollins, Roland Kirk, anybody, Oscar mm -hmm. Peterson, Ella Fitzgerald, it, these are all has to be.